Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week, we have got loads. We've got Welter Tech, your upgrades, and an amazing prize giveaway. I'm exactly. excited about it's that. really good. And we build the most expensive bike in the world. You're gonna need so many of these. <laughs> Now, hot in the world of tech this week is a new e-bike from Trek. Having a snoop around online this weekend meant I managed to get a glimpse of something which we've not even heard from Trek yet. So, well, who knows what it could be? Yeah, well, it appears to be the Demane Plus, and it has a 350 watt Bosch motor on it, and that also powers daytime running lights. And apparently, it's gonna be coming with a SRAM Force one by group set as well, but I mean, more info on that when we when we get it. Now, we've been thinking about that lightweight bike option that we were building up a couple of weeks back on the show. And whilst a lightweight option isn't necessarily the most practical for everyone out there, nor is this, because we today are gonna build the world's most expensive bike. Yeah, okay, so, well, we're not actually gonna build it. Oh. But uh, what we have done is scoured the internet up and down for the most expensive components available to humanity. Now, we just wanted to do this because we wanted to get an idea of how much the most expensive bike in the world could cost, in theory. But why, you ask? Well, why not? I mean, <laughs> you know, there's, there doesn't have to be a reason for it necessarily, does there? No. And Whilst we have looked long, hard, high, low, everything like that to actually try and find these ultra expensive components, well, we reckon there's probably some we've missed. So if there is, don't be mean in the comments, just let us know. Let yeah. us know what we have slipped up on, essentially. Yeah, please do. Down there in the comments section. Yeah, so the other thing to point out is that the prices that we found for these things are generally full retail prices. And the reason why we've done that is we reckon that if you're in the market for this kind of bike, then your butler's probably ordering all the parts for you. And let's face it, he's not gonna waste time shopping around, is he? So, yeah, we've also used a currency converter as well. Oh, okay. So if something's in pounds and we need to convert it into dollars, unfortunately, that is what we have done. Yeah. So, wow. So, let's get stuck yeah, in. Let's crack on. First one, what have we got? It's the... Well, it's the frame set. Oh, I think that's the best start, place start to begin. The frame then. Yeah. So for the frame set, we have, there's lots of exotic frame sets out there yeah. from all the fancy brands, you know, Pinarello, Colnago's, really expensive bits of kit out there. We've gone for a, a Parley Z0 frame set because it costs 7,779 pounds, which is what in dollars? That is $9,971 and 67 cents. <laughs> It's a fair one to start at, yeah. isn't it, really? So it's a good start, a strong yeah. start. <laughs> but when you get that frame, well, it's gonna look a bit boring, isn't it? Well, it's, a, it's, well, nice it's not. Well, it's not. It's probably gonna look right? really absolutely beautiful. But let's face it, we need to put some extra money onto that bike. Yeah. So we're gonna get it painted. So Great we're gonna show. go down to, I don't know, Ali at Fat Creations yeah. or well, Rob at Colourburn Studios. Yeah. And well, we're going to spend some money, aren't we? I think an amazing custom paint job. So yeah. how much is that going Something to be? Something flashy. Uh, dollars, you're probably looking at... Ooh. I did work it out earlier on. Yeah. $769, that's okay. what it would cost. So right. yeah, there we are. We saved a little bit of... Oh, no, we saved some money. Oh, it doesn't matter, $769. <laughs> doesn't matter. So next up, seat post. Oh. Uh, we scoured around looking for a lot of expensive seat posts. Yeah. There's a, you know, a few different ones available, but we have gone for... Um, a Schmolker, Schmolker, uh, TLO unidirectional carbon fiber seat post, four hundred eighty-four dollars and fifty-nine cents for oh, a seat post. Bargain. A saddle. What we are? What we're going to get? We went for the Gelu K3 saddle, which is a full carbon affair. Uh, doesn't weigh a lot. Uh, weighs thirty-eight grams and comes at a cost of. $571.11 for that saddle. Right. So that combined with your seat post, over $1,000. Wheels, oh. one of the most important components, one of my favorite components yeah. on any bike. Yeah, I'm a bit of a wheel pervert, to be so, honest. <laughs> <laughs> so for wheels, I mean, I didn't look much further, if I'm honest, than, no, than lightweight. Did, we? Yeah. yeah, straight to lightweight, had a look what they've got, and the lightweight Meilenstein Obermeyers, 
Uh, they were retailing at £5,217 we saw. What's that in dollars? £6,686.27. So these are special edition mega super duper ones. Yeah. Well. I must also say as well, mm. when, I, when we were searching for these products, when we were going the categories, it was literally sort price high to low. The absolute <laughs> yeah. opposite of what I do in my normal yeah. life, where I go search by discount or search by low yeah. to high. I think every time I buy anything ever, anything, I've never I ever done go this. To low to high. Yeah. We went for some Dugast silk tubular artisan handmade tires coming from, I think they're from France, aren't they, Dugast? Yeah. Andre Dugast. Uh, so yeah, and they came in at, what did they come in at? They were 100 euros. So, need two of those, obviously. Wow. Yeah. Currency exchange, $230.86. Not bad, is it? That's actually quite reasonable, I thought. That's one of the, probably one of the, the best value components yeah. on, on the bike. Yeah, so anyway. far. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, the lightweights come with some pretty rad skewers, yeah. but we're gonna take those off and we're gonna, we're gonna save those for the turbo. They've been yeah. relegated, um, <laughs> the lightweight titanium skewers, because we found something even lighter. So, we're gonna bang on some Tune U20 skewers. Um, yeah, and how much do they Well, they, the... they came in at $310.38. That's snitch. Right, yeah. chuck them on. I tell you what, this bike is getting more and more outrageous as we go. It's just a shame we haven't got it here to actually show you because that would have been super cool, wouldn't it? Uh, then, it's a future video, that one. Yeah, we're gonna need to spend a little bit more here because I, I thought that we were dropping it down a little bit there. Yeah. So, pedals. Well, well, there's only one option here. Is there? there? What? What? Speed play. Those nano ultralight ones. Oh, the titanium. Yes, yes, yes. Price-wise for that, oh, I'm gonna have to have to find these. Uh, $630. $630 for a pair of pedals. Very light as well, 130 grams a pair. So again, there's, yeah. that, there's that correlation. Don't want to clip those, do you? No, definitely not. Um, group set. Yeah. So we're not going to use an entire group set. No. Because we've got some plans. Yeah. But we are going to use shifters, front mech and rear mech. And, yeah. all, the and all the gubbins as well, all the battery and the parts yeah, and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. So for that, We've got to go for the most expensive, which is naturally Campagnolo Super Record EPS. Beautiful as well. Uh, dollars, 3,078 and 31 cents. Okay. For those components, those right. sort of four or five bits there. Check it on. Yeah. So for the other bits of the group set that we're not using, because we're going to upgrade certain elements of the group yeah. set. Naturally. Um, well, brake cables. Yeah, power cords. So they're the most, I mean, ex they're, they're the most they're expensive. They're just expensive. That's, that's what we're going for. They're the most it? expensive cables you can get on your bike. Yeah, 105 euros, which <laughs> works. <laughs> 105 euros, 121 dollars, 28 cents. Wow. Power cords, yeah. I was amazed when I saw them. First saw them probably about 10 years ago. Well, we're using the Super Record EPS rear derailleur, but we're going to modify it naturally. Yeah, of course. Um, with the Ceramic Speed oversized pulley wheel system. But we're not using just the normal oversized no, pulley no, wheel system. No, that'd be too cheap. That's yeah, it's way below our, our budget. Yeah. Uh, so we're going for the 3D printed titanium one, which is 1,500 euros. What's that in dollars? Well, 1,731 and 17 cents. <laughs> Outrageous. Again, this yeah. is just on a currency conversion, so it could vary locally, but it could do, yeah. in our office, that's what it came out. Yes, and um, well, the, the, you're gonna need a fancy chain. We're gonna need you? a chain, yeah. yeah. So, Go on. Well, we did look at the UFO chain from Ceramic Speed, but that, that was just too cheap. It was yeah. 130 euros or something. So that's a, that's a snip, isn't it? Yeah, well, we've gone for the more expensive, muck off, nano optimized chain. Uh, which comes in at $200. Um, we haven't got a, what, you know, we're gonna need a chain set and, uh, and chain rings. Yes, yeah. What are we going for? Uh, well, chain set, we decided to go for the uh, THM Clavicula, but it was it with a bundle, actually. Here, we did save a little bit of money. Oh, which was, a bundle deal. Which was possibly a bit of a mistake on our part, but it was easier <laughs> for the butler. So it was the THM Clavicula cranks, and that came with the SRM PC8 uh, power meter, didn't it? Yeah. Because well, of course you need a power meter. Yeah, so, right. so uh, cranks, power meter, and head unit bundle. Yeah, and that came in at $4,652.74. Oh, well, anything for an easy life for our butler. I mean, hand handlebars and stem, I mean, the butler's not gonna like this because- no, this is gonna be a nightmare. Because the Sultan has put in 
a special request. <laughs> I've decided that to get the most expensive. This was his idea, by the way. It wasn't mine. Basically, the Sultan, I've decided that's who it is who's buying this bike. Yeah. He has, uh, he was watching the hour record and he saw that Bradley Wiggins had a custom 3D printed titanium cockpit on his hour record bike. Nice bit of kit, that. So, yeah, um, the, the richest man in the world buying the most expensive bike, he naturally wants a custom 3D printed uh, integrated bar and stem combo <laughs> for his bike that's perfect for his measurements. So, we have estimated by looking at some sites on the internet that that would cost at least three thousand pounds. Now this um, bike is going up in value quite rapidly. Once you, <laughs> once you add on custom-made three D printed parts like that, yeah. but yeah, we do. Have, luckily, we do have some friends in the three D printing world who told us rough estimation yeah. of about three thousand pounds yeah. dollars, three thousand eight hundred and forty-seven and twenty-one cents. Oh, yeah. Bargain. Of course, I suppose titanium price does vary worldwide, but. Yeah, um, I think we've got to look at a few other little bits. We've, I mean, we've put the bottle cages on. Yeah. Bottle cage bolts. We're not going to use the standard stainless steel ones that it came with. No, because that would be free of charge. So oh. we're going to upgrade them to titanium ones from Carbon Tie. And yep, $29.71 <laughs> for four. How much does that say? It was like a gram? Uh, 7.6. No, I reckon it saves quite a bit. Really? Yeah. Oh. Titanium bottle cage bolts, pretty light. Oh. Let's do it. But it's not about lightweight, it's all about the bling. So we've got a rim brake bike. We're yep. gonna need some rim brakes. As yep. I said, we're not using the super record ones because they're just, I mean, they're bargain basement compared to what we're gonna use. Yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> THN Fibula brakes. Uh, they come in at uh, $1,411.04. And they're fully carbon as well, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, and they are basically, for the pair, less than half the weight of Dual Ace, I think, so. Wow. Yeah. We've gone for the Rota Uno cassette, which is milled out of a single piece of titanium alloy, and... That's a strong machine that's got a mill there as well, isn't it? Yeah, they're really cool looking items yeah. though, really nice. Yeah, it does look good. Um, and they're very light as well, but yep. they cost, what, $410? Yeah. Right, chuck it on. Right. What's next? Add it to cart. Uh, next up, is a headset, so okay. of course you need that to be able to ride. Uh, so we're gonna use a Chris King no thread set, but not just the normal one. <laughs> that'd, be, that, you know, that'd be too cheap, wouldn't it, really? So we've decided to fit a titanium one. Have it. we, have we? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that comes in at $298. Just, 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 $2 just $298. So what, I, uh, by my well, reckoning we're there. Yeah, what, I think we've, think we've done it. What's the total of, of this? The total, $36,573.49. Oh my days. <laughs> That's outrageous. Unbelievable. Um, what's that in pounds? In, in pounds, 28,530 and 28p. Right, that is a lot of money. On a bicycle. And we we thought this would be quite a fun thing to see how much money, in theory, if yeah. you really want to spend as much money as possible as you can on a bike. So that, that's what we've come up with. But if, I, th I, I do still think we've missed something though. Yeah. Like, well, I th still think we've missed out a component on there that is ultra, ultra, ultra expensive. Yeah. And there's someone at home who's laughing, so just let us know in the comments. Yeah. Now we've done this just for a little bit of fun, just yeah. to see how much it could be, because we think it's quite good fun. But we're interested, what else could you buy for that same amount of money? So I did a little bit of searching, and I've found a Porsche Boxster that's two years old, 25,000 miles on the clock, and that's available for 28,000 pounds. Yeah, now this one, Dan Lloyd would be particularly happy about this one, I believe, because you could buy 8,142 pints of beer. <laughs> that's a big round, that he's never bought a round anywhere, near. No, ima not. imagine that, barman. <laughs> yeah, or, well, you could head over to the GCN shop and get 1,649 caps. Yeah. That'd probably be a better way to spend yeah. your money. Give them out to all your mates, yeah, people on the side of the road, Tour de France, that sort of thing. You could, yeah. Oh, sorry, 1,679 caps. Oh. Yeah, my, men my mental maths was rubbish then. Yeah, anyway, let us know though, what are the world's most expensive bike components? Because yeah, we, you know, know, we just want to get stuck in and actually check them out for ourselves. Yeah. Because we think it's an ultra, ultra, you know, we're never going to be able to afford these things, are we? <laughs> Let's face it. 
So we want to know all about them because who knows, maybe we'll get the opportunity one day to contact all these companies and we can build that bike. That's just pretty see what it looks like. It'd be absolutely amazing. And give it away as a prize. First up this week on Tech of the Week, well, we've got the ideal solution for those home mechanics who like to travel around with their tools because Park Tool have just released this, the new BX3, a big blue box basically, but it's not just that because this one is impact resistant, it's got an extendable handle, easy to tow around behind you, as well as some gas assisted struts. So the kind of thing which you have on the boots or the trunk of your car, I think that's what they call them. Americans call them trunks, right? Yeah. Back, yeah. yeah, well, not to mention loads of pockets for all of your tools and it even has an air pressure compensation valve. How cool is that? So that those struts don't fly open. I mean, you don't want them to. Yeah. Get it. Let's get it open then, Ollie. Come on, mate. Whoa. Check it out. Hang on a minute, cheeky little cap. Banging. Now, having a massive interest in what tech the pros use. Uh, some would call it stalking. Thank you, Oliver. Uh, I'm really, really happy to have spotted, thank you, on some of the skin suits being used in the opening time trial of the Vuelta this year. On the riders of Bahrain Merida, uh, Bora Hansgrohe, and Trek Segafredo, they were using skin suits with the zip on the rear rather than on the front, which isn't exactly new tech because I had a couple of teammates probably 20 years ago now who had custom skin suits with the zip on the back. But it's quite interesting nonetheless. Yeah, we reached out to Sportful who makes the clothing for those particular teams and they said that it's actually a new prototype skin suit and a production version will be hopefully available in 2019. But nonetheless, it is interesting how that sort of tech comes full circle because mm. the recent trend for skin suits had to the zip on the front. So yeah. it's coming back with zips on the back. Interesting. Also spotted at the Vuelta time trial was what appeared to be a new visor on the Rudy Project Boost Pro helmet as worn by Vincenzo Nibali. Now this looks like the kind of thing that you could make if you were handy with a Dremel and had a curved lens. Which uh, we all do, let's well, face it. Yeah. Uh, but it also reminds me of the uh, of the shades that Brett the Hitman Hart used to wear as well. Oh yeah, one of my <laughs> one of my favourite wrestlers. We could have a grapple later on, Ollie, if you like. Uh, now, <laughs> incidentally, when I worked for a helmet manufacturer, we did have a request from some of the pros that we sponsored to make a different visor because. Let's face it, riders have different positions. Wind can come in at angles and it can really irritate your eyes whilst down there on the skis, yeah. can't it? Uh, that visor though reminds me a lot, an awful lot, of the one on the Giro Aerohead time trial helmet. Yeah, a so successful helmet. Yeah, wrap around. Meanwhile, someone who's pretty content with his visor is Davide Vieira of Astana because, well, he's in a little different modification though to his helmet because he's got out the mechanic's favorite, the bit of black tape to cover up some vents. Yeah. Maybe he's a little bit hot. Well, I've That's experimented cool. with this in the past and there is actually a measurable benefit to taping up vents on, on time trial helmets in terms of it improves aerodynamics. But it's important to point out that it's not UCI legal. No, that's right. And while he's there, he's gone to the trouble of taping his vents, but he hasn't worn any aero socks, which is oh. a bit of an aero faux pas if yeah. you're an aero nerd. Also, he hasn't got a zip, has he, on the front of his skin no, suit no, either? So yeah, that's on the rear. So there we are. This is like cycling's version of train spotters, isn't it? Oh, look at what he's using this week. <laughs> but I, I absolutely love it. I'm, I, I'm terrible at this. I could pick through riders' photos and just look at little ways yeah. where they could improve. And even if I was doing all those things, I'd still be absolutely terrible. So yeah, yeah. yeah they're pros, aren't they? Now let's end on a custom bike because let's face it, we all love custom bikes. We so, all dream of one really. Yeah. <laughs> so this is the bike of British road race champion and Madison Genesis rider Connor Swift, who is a name that you might not have heard of yet, but keep an eye out because he's destined for big things because he yeah. took a lot of scalps in getting that British road race title and he rides for just a you know, continental team. Yes. Uh, so yes, this bike is absolutely beautiful. It's been done by Rob at Colourburn, Colourburn Studios. Yeah. And they're only just down the road from us actually, like yeah. 20k away. And they've done a cracking job with it. Yeah. I really like it. Yeah. I mean, look at it. It's basically, it's, they've taken a, a basically quite a plain frame to be perfectly honest. I imagine it was nude carbon, painted it white, and then they've just thrown paint at it, what it looks like. But 
I spoke to Rob and he's not just thrown paint at it. It does actually take a bit of art because believe it or not, you can't just throw paint at something and make it look good. Otherwise we would try it on ourselves. Uh, <laughs> but I believe they actually dip a stick in the paint and you kind of flick it in a, in a motion. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what happens. He's also got on there uh, a Yorkshire rose. So it's just the outline of it. So it's just sort of missing any color. Um, oh, that's so it. Yorkshire rose oh, doesn't mean York much to many people, but it does to him because he's from an area called Yorkshire. Wars have been fought over this very thing. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> right, the Yorkshire rose is white. It is a white rose. Yeah, I always thought it was red, oh, but I've God. been told that's the Lancashire rose. <laughs> so there we are. Uh, anyway, he's also got some motivational quotes on it too. And I think bikes like that, they just stand out a mile. And well, well done, Robert Cullerburn, because he's had quite a few of his bikes this year going to the Pro Peloton. Yeah. So Miguel Angel Lopez, his Superman edition bike, Jakob Fugelshanks, I'm sure there's many more out there too. I'm digging Connors. Yeah, more tech next week. Now we've got a huge giveaway this week on GCN. It's probably or possibly the biggest we've ever done, which is saying something because we've given away some awesome prizes. So this autumn and winter, we're teaming up with Oman to showcase the country as a cycling destination. The weather, the scenery, the roads, it looks absolutely fantastic. Oh, it does. So we've got a phenomenal prize, right? One lucky winner and a plus one, so you get to take a friend, will get entry to the Oat Route Oman three-day event. And also included in the prize will be return flights from any airport of your choice to Muscat, the capital of Oman, hotels, transfers in Oman, and you get a goodie bag with jersey and shorts. But get this, if all of that wasn't enough, you also get a bike. A bike. A 3T Strada Pro bike. How cool so is that? You get a bike and a holiday. Oh man, how do I enter? <laughs> I'm glad you asked that, John. Um, so it's really easy. Simply click on the link in the description below, follow the instructions, and uh, you can enter there. And it's free to do so. I can't wait. I, I, I'm so looking forward. I hope I win this. Oh, sorry, mate. You, you're not. You're not allowed to enter. Why not? Uh, no, no presenters allowed. I already tried. Oh, I was going to take you as my plus one. Would you have done the same? Yeah. Yeah, would it? Cool. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, nice I'm just gutted I can't enter. Yeah, anyway, anyway, well, good luck. If you, I mean, please do enter this because that's an absolutely cracking prize, isn't it? Absolutely cracking. Link in the description below. And good luck. Now it's time for the part of the show where we check out the upgrades that you've bought for your bike because it's screw riding upgrades by upgrades. And well, you've submitted so many of them. And last week, we put it for you to actually vote for who should win the GCN workshop apron. And I think- That's right, well, oh, hang on a minute. It's, it's not an apron, oh. it's a cape. Oh. There we are, the caped crusader himself, Ollie Bridgewood. Don't try it at home, kids. <laughs> anyway, the winner of last week was Dave from the Netherlands and the upgrades that he made to his giant. So, well done Dave. Get in contact with us on Facebook and we will get that workshop apron on its way to you. So you don't, you, well, you don't just have to wear it in the workshop, you could also bake yourself a cake, loaf of bread, whatever. Yeah. Just wear it out to your local pub or club. Yeah. Yeah, looks great. Look at Ollie in it. Right, let's see then who have we got this week. We've got, first up, Jerome or Jeroen from Belgium with their BMC Alpine Challenge AC01. Now, Jeroen was looking for an easy to maintain road bike with disc brakes and at least 36 millimeters of tire clearance. That's quite precise, isn't it? At least yeah. 36 millimeters. Anyway, um, and also the possibility to mount mud guards. No press fit bearings allowed as well, <laughs> Jeroen said. So again, pretty precise. Commonly available bearings and replacement parts only. There we go. Now, he found this bike on eBay and converted it to drop handlebars. Look at it, it looks like a completely different bike through That's having amazing, drop handlebars, yeah. doesn't it? That's awesome. Yeah, I really like that one, Jerome. That's really cool. Yeah. That's a great I upgrade. Mean, literally, just, I mean, all right, I know he's changed his levers as well. Mm. That's about that, but it's a great upgrade. Right, good job. It's, it's totally and utterly transformed the bike. He ain't got his mug guards on there, though, so yeah. But anyway, great one. No, it's awesome. Right. Good bikes. Um, Daniel from Bury in the UK, which I believe is also where the Yates twins are from. Yeah, there are some talent uh, coming out of Bury. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, after buying three different frames and realizing that getting the balance between cost, looks, frame weights, geometry, and compatibility <laughs> were all proper headaches, yes, they finally went for it and got this Trek Amanda SL. 
According to Daniel, my missus was literally ready for upping sticks and leaving me. <laughs> Been there, done that. No, she didn't leave, but yeah. After two <laughs> frames he bought, he then decided against and another one and chickened out of buying after a two hour drive. He dismantled uh, the previous bike twice in anticipation for the next frame being the one. Thankfully, that's all done now and the steer has even been cut to prove it. So that's some dedication, go. isn't it? I mean, he nearly yeah. ended up having having his, his other half walk out because he had been dismantling his bike three times in anticipation. I particularly like the fact that he drove two hours to go and buy another frame, which is quite a fair drive. Yeah. And then chickened out when getting there and <laughs> drove back. Imagine that. It's a four hour round trip. Right, love, I'm gonna be back in a few hours time. It comes back empty handed. I can't, I can only wonder how that conversation went at the end of the night, but yeah. That's a great upgrade. Got himself a new frame and cut that steerer to prove uh, he's gonna keep it for a long time. Oh, it looks good. Yeah. I so like who are you gonna vote for then this week? Um, you've got your own and his bar swap to give him the bike he wanted, or is it Daniel and the bike buying that nearly ended up with him being single? Uh, either way, one of them is gonna get an apron, so you have to take that one off and send it to them. But as ever, <laughs> We're not going to decide, are we? Because, I mean, it is tough. Because yeah. I like the fact that he nearly got dumped. I think that's quite sort of funny <laughs> in, a, in a weird, like, in a, in a friendly way, Daniel. But also your own, because that bike has totally been transformed, hasn't it? Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, so vote up there in the poll, and next week we will reveal it. Who is going to have that workshop apron? Bike of the week time. This is the moment where you get to vote for two bikes of the Pro Peloton, or in fact sometimes just two bikes that we put head to head, and you've got to vote on screen. So let's have a quick recap of last week, where we put two time trial bikes head to head. The Merida Warp of Bahrain Merida, fantastic looking bike, and the BMC Time Machine of BMC Racing. Now, I thought that this vote would be a lot closer yeah. in the results, but the winner, with 76% of the votes, the BMC. Yeah. Yeah. So a big, big gap there. I'm pretty surprised at that. Yeah. Didn't think it'd be quite close. Anyway, what have we got there this week? This week we have two of the best looking bikes in professional cycling right now, mm. I reckon. So we've got the Trek Drops Trek Amanda versus the Canyon Air Road of Canyon Tram. Oh, I'll tell you what, both of those bikes are so good looking, aren't they? I think they are. Yeah, I'd have them both. Yeah, yeah I think I think those bikes, the colours on them just pop out. The only thing is, that Trek is dangerously close to Celeste for me. Yeah. And you know my, it's not really a dislike, I just wish that some companies would make bikes in other colours. But yeah. anyway, I think I'm gonna go for, I actually think I'm gonna go for the Trek. I'm gonna go for the Trek yeah, as well. Just because it's so unusual, that colour. Anyway, it's not about us. Don't let us influence you. Vote up there, top corner. And next week, we will reveal the results and I'm gonna risk it again. Have two more, head to head, <laughs> every week. Now it's time for the Bike Vault where viewers, so you at home, you actually submit pictures of your pride and joy using the GCN uploader tool, which there's a link to the description down below. So if you want to get your bike featured, make sure you use that. Yeah. And well, we either rate it nice or super nice. Super nice gets a ring of that bell, which, shall I give it a go this week? It's your turn. All it's right. It's your turn. I, I Can't know. wait. Uh, right, Let's so look. go so on mate. Got. What have we got this week? First up, we have Nick in Newcastle upon Tyne. Why He's taken a picture. <laughs> Nick's taken a picture of his Enigma Evoke Disc Titanium uh, at the top of Great Dunfell uh, in Cumbria, <laughs> where he narrowly missed the Strava KOM by a mere 30 minutes. <laughs> well, to be honest, here, climb. if someone is going up a climb for that long, yeah. I mean, the bike, it looks good, doesn't it? It's a big old unit, that. Um, yeah, and outside what looks to be like a giant golf ball, I imagine it's a weather station or something like that. Personally, yeah. super nice. Yeah, super nice. Love, yeah, it, love a nice, nice. Titan yeah. titanium bike. Yeah. I don't like that. Right. Uh, Who now, else have we got? What? Jonathan in Louisiana, USA. Whoa. Ridley Noah. Look at that. What does he say? I was out for an easy spin and decided to explore a local dam where I found loads of awesome art. At first, I thought that was a half pipe skateboard ramp. Well, it's, concrete. Got the, it's got the cookie monster on it. Yeah, I mean, that is, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah. The saddle's very far forward, but it's got the cookie monster on it. Look let's that, face yeah, it. It's nice and aero. It's an aggressive looking bike, that. Cookie, cookie, cookie. Well, you know what a cookie monster gets. Yeah. Super nice. Yeah. Super Do nice. It. Yeah. Right, next up, we have 
Pascal in Adelaide. Oh, one of my favourite places in the whole world. So Pascal is uh, my doozy cargo bike with Shimano Alfine 11 speed hub uh, and even a Physique Arioni saddle. It's a proper goer. Check out that. I mean, that's a utility bike, isn't it? That's the sort of thing you go around, you do your grocery shopping around the CBD. Or you put Sai in, in the front and ride around. Yeah, very good point. Yeah, got that's, what I, that's what I do with it. It's got a kickstand, like I say, physique saddle. Yeah, and you could carry a fellow presenter around in it. Yeah. I think that's a nice looking bike, that. Yeah, I think it's nice. Super Is nice it? or nice? I, th I think it's a nice. I think it's nice, yeah. I'd like to see a bit more color in it. Yeah. Yeah. Either way, nice bike. Next up, we've got Josh in uh, Kent, the UK. His bike is a Cannondale CAD 12, um, and it's a CAD 12 disc frame set. He's got Shimano DI2, Hunt Aero 50, oh. tubeless wheels, Dura Ace disc rotors, ceramic sea bear bottom bracket, nice, and Envy finishing kit. And my favorite bit that's on his bike. Go on. He's got a Physique Volta R1 saddle. I mean, it's a stunning bike, isn't it, that? I love the paint job. That's yeah. wicked. Yeah. Is that is that standard or not? Um, I can't. Not sure. I, you know, I don't know. I, but I think it looks absolutely brilliant. Yeah, it looks purple wicked. bicycle. Is it purple? I suppose it is. Yeah. It's, it just looks. It's like it's a brilliant. It's like, that reminds me of the old Vitus bike. I like the background he's gone with as well. It yeah. kind of suits the bike. Bit of graph. Volta saddle as well. That's yeah. that's a choice that he shares. Yeah. He's an esteemed company here. He shares the Volta saddle with. Physique Gilbert, Physique Gilbert, <laughs> Philippe Gilbert, <laughs> Philippe Gilbert, and Tom Lass. Yeah, our very own Tom Lass. He's a big fan of that Good saddle. Club too. to be in. Yeah. Oh, I mean, to be honest, that one. that's a no-brainer for me. Yeah, that is a super They've nice. They've used the bike stand a bit weird, but I mean, yeah, <laughs> that's that's by the by, isn't it? That's yeah. super nice. Yeah, super absolutely nice. brilliant. Nice right. one. Right. right there we are. Nearly forgot to ring the bell. Then. A lot of trouble. As ever, you know what to do. Submit your bike using the uploader tool down there in the description. Or next Could, week. Yeah, maybe we'll have yours. So there we are. Nearly time for the end of the show. But what's coming up this week? Well, we've got more lightweight, cool, fancy tech coming from the Vuelta Espana, which I managed to get my grubby little hands on. Uh, then we've got Thomas Marchinski's Pro Bike. And he's got an amazing pair of legs, I must just say that. Do you remember that picture of his ripped legs? Probably not. Okay, stalker. Uh, what else is coming up? <laughs> On Sunday, we've got an unboxing. Um, it's a brand new ASOS product, and it's really, I really want one. I just want to get one, so. I might try and interested to win that as well. Yeah, yeah, if we can. Yeah. And then on Monday, we are teaming up with Calvin from yeah. Park Tool. Oh, what a guy. Yeah. I was, say, I was so he's going to be telling him, yeah, giving us a load of maintenance tips and stuff. So tune yeah, in for that on Monday, exactly. and then after that, we're going to well be back in here, back in here, you know, helping fix your problems with the tech clinic. And remember as well, like and share this video with your friends, and give it a thumbs up too. What about the GCN shop? Wow, oh, well, don't forget about that. Come on, shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com, where we have a whole heap of goodies for you to get stuck into.